supposed to you know, enforce the police department's policy regarding use of force, uh, courtesy, professional respect. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to answer everyone's questions. And like uh, Mr. Cohen said, you know, we'll, we'll stay here as long as we need to. I'll, I'll answer everybody's question, but if we can just do it one at a time, we'll, we'll get through this. All right, on October 16th, uh, Deputy Commissioner Brown issued a statement. Police responded on October 8th at 5.12 a.m. to a call of a dispute inside the synagogue's outreach center on Brooklyn, in Brooklyn between the security guard and the man there. The security guard told police that the individual was sleeping naked in, a reserve, in an area reserved for women. When police arrived, the individual had put a pair of pants on. The officers used force to arrest in which Ehud Alabi, male white, 21, was charged with assault, trespass, resisting arrest, harassment, and unlawful possession of marijuana. The NYPD Internal Affairs opened an investigation of this incident yesterday after having seen a video of it. The matter was also referred to IAB, by IAB to the Civilian Complaint Review Board. One of the officers, he's a male Hispanic, 49 years of age, and assigned to the 71st Precinct, has been placed on my uh, assignment while this incident is under investigation. Okay, and I just want to explain to you what modified assignment means. Basically, the officer is uh, assigned to administrative duties. He's relieved of his gun and his badge, and uh, that's, uh, that's basically the, the action that the police uh, department has taken in regards to this incident so far. Um, I've spoken to many, many leaders since then. I spoke to uh, Rabbi Fagelin, and uh, we're trying to work through this, really, and, uh, and, and, and come to some resolution. But, uh, the fact of the matter is, it's an open investigation. I really can't comment on the, um, the specifics of the allegations and the, uh, the videotape, but I, I can comment on, you know, the perception of the police and how the police treat people, and and, and what what our um, what we the code of conduct that we uh, that we expect from our officers. Yes, sir. Hi. I'm Moshe Sani. Last year, one of your officers. Could you, could you just speak up a little bit? I'm Moshe Sani. Last year, one of your officers attacked me. Could you give me a microphone? Hi, I'm Moshe Sani. Last year, I was attacked by the officers with many false charges. This time they beat up a guy. Maybe next time they're gonna shoot a guy and they're gonna get away with it like the last time and this time they're getting away with it. Is that, do you have a response for that? Well, I, I can't comment on the particulars. I, I, I know, I know, I know it's in the paper today. Made it go away? Well, this incident happened last September, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. I first became aware of this incident yesterday. Um, I know there were allegations. I know one was I know there were allegations that were necessary for us used. I, I really don't know the specifics of the, of the uh, situation, but I can tell you that any single, every every time there's an allegation of uh, un, a disputed arrest, an unwarranted arrest, excessive use of force, unnecessary force, we take the complaint from the individual and we refer it to the appropriate agency. You guys refused to meet with the big council board. You said you guys refused to meet with who? The big council. They begged you to come. They begged the city to come. You guys pushed it on the office. You refused to come to meet with them. What the gentleman is saying is that the police department refused to come to the, the Crown Heights Jewish Community Council and discuss the matter. And that's true because the, the protocol in the police department is whether you're making an, uh, an allegation of discourtesy or some other unprofessionalism or some wrongdoing that could rise all the way up to something that's criminal, we're gonna refer it to the appropriate agency for investigation. And the officer has certain rights and um, there's a lot of forms of discipline that the police department go through. So when you've been wronged by the police department, you really need to make the report to the appropriate person and then it will be investigated fully and thoroughly. We're not, we, have, we work in a large agency. We need to do things according to policy and procedure. We're not gonna step outside the guidelines of the way the police department tells us to handle our business. As the executive in the 71st Precinct, I can, I can go out and meet with the community 
I can discuss people's issues, their concerns, allay, allay fears, but the officer is not going to sit down there and have a mediation because there's a process that the police department goes through, whether it's the civilian complaint review board or whether it's the uh, internal affairs division. Well, it's a very valid point. And, you know, if I expect, and, and we do expect as the police department and society in general, we really do expect people to submit to the authority of the police officer. And if, if, if the police officer's character is flawed or his integrity is in question, then it makes it very difficult for the person to submit to that authority. Um, and as for the allegation of assault against a who, in this particular instance, whenever, whenever the police are involved in engaged in an incident, and we, we have, we're taking action, and this actually applies to a whole bunch of other civil servants, bus drivers, fire firemen, EMTs, teachers, nurses, when, they, when we're conducting our business, and you're trying to prevent us from conducting our business, and an injury occurs, you don't have to punch, kick, slap. You don't, you don't have to have any intent to get charged with the assault. The mere fact that the officer gets injured or the, the doctor or the nurse, whoever it is, while they're conducting their business, that makes an assault in the second degree. So I, I know it's very difficult for, office, for, for a civilian to understand that concept, but that's, but that's the fact of the matter. And you know, the district attorney's office is here, and if there are any inconsistencies in the officer's statement, the district attorney is going to take a hard look at that. And, that, and that's all part of the process that will go on as, as part of this investigation. Listen, I, I can't get into the specifics of this matter. I'm just not allowed. Okay, for the office to uh, to initiate the physical force. Well, the answer is it depends. It depends upon the situation, and that that will all. Yes, sometimes. Absolutely. I, I'm not commenting on this issue, on this situation particularly, but yes, sometimes we can throw a first punch, absolutely. So the guy has no rights? He's just no, everybody has rights. Punched. Everybody has rights in this society, and, and everybody has responsibilities in this society. Excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I, I need to ask again. Is there a representative from the DA's office? Yes, there is. Was this brought uh, an indictment through a grand jury? It, is this case being, no, the, the matter currently is being handled by the district attorney with a who as a defendant. But as a matter of course and as a matter of procedure, as they go, go through their case, if they find there's some inconsistency or some problem with the officer's testimony, they will refer that to the police department. I'm just a little bit concerned, or more than a little concerned, about the culture in the 71st precinct. Culture in business, if you're in manufacturing, you're trying to produce the best product. If you're in healthcare, you're trying to produce quality of say, culture of safety. I'm questioning what is the culture of the 71st precinct? As you're the commander, you set the culture and the tone of the 71st precinct, because you're actually the vice president of the 71st precinct and you have your corporate leadership to carry out. So that a police officer could go ahead and do such a thing, obviously he thought that he could get away with it. Mm -hmm. So there's a culture in the 71st precinct, and that's a concern for everybody in this room, why a police officer would think he could get away with that. What's in the 71st precinct culture? As I said earlier, the matter is still under investigation. Um, and as to culture, you know, we constantly address our officers and we constantly tell them we expect them to deal with every single person in the community in any situation as they would expect one of their family members to be treated. We, 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 we pound this into them. This is, what we, this is the way we want them to act. Um, we let them know that when, it, when someone's uh, resisting arrest, we're allowed to use the necessary force and nothing more. And we also let them know that when that person's done resisting and the person's handcuffed, it's over. That's it. We're done. Um, the, the, the 71st Precinct has uh, executed over 2,500 arrests for the year. And every, uh, I'm answering the other man's question. There's always going to be disputed arrests in the police department. There's always going to be disputed summonses. This conduct is not tolerated, and there's some serious allegations and there's some serious issues raised with this video, you know. But that, 
The way that is handled is not going to be at my level. And if we have a whole different bureau in the New York City Police Department that investigates misconduct from the police department by, by our members, and it's being investigated. I, I'm, not, I'm not privy to, the, to how their investigation is going, but I'm working in conjunction with the commanding officer of the, of the force group in, in internal affairs. Stuff he needs, I get to him, and we're working together closely. We understand there's real, there's real serious allegations. But if you're trying to tell me that you believe that there's a culture of the police just bashing you, I have to disagree. Because we're out there, we're writing thousands of summons a year. We're, we're issuing thousands of tickets for people that are urinating in public and riding their bikes on the sidewalk. Uh, hundreds, of, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of uh, motorist tickets, and we're also blocking up thousands of people. And we really get a relatively few number of uh, allegations. <clears throat> In, in anything, when, when you're in an adversarial role it's a, the police department, there's going to be people that are unhappy. And there is the, there is always the court, the course, the, the, me, the remedy to address your concerns. It may be the CCRB, Internal Affairs, or even the District Attorney's Office. And we're, we're cooperating fully with the investigation. It's going to go on.